Everybody loves a good Neapolitan pizza, which is why it's no surprise that there are more and more products on the market to help home cooks make their own Neapolitan style pizza. Ava and I own some of them ourselves. We have pizza stones, we have a pizza peel, we have our very own uni pizza oven. But let's be 100% honest. Making Neapolitan pizza at home is a hobby. At the very least, you need a pizza stone, a pizza peel is a must. But in order to come even close to the real deal, you need a specialized pizza oven, something that hits like 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Most home cooks don't have hundreds of dollars to spend on a oven that they can basically use for one food. Actually, you can do a few other things with them, but that's beside the point. The same is true here in Italy. I'm sure they're out there, don't get me wrong, but it's not super common to see people making Neapolitan pizza. They leave that to Naples. Instead, they make the pizza that we're gonna show you today. It's a style of pizza that has a lot of advantages for the home cook, and it's pretty attractive even to Neapolitan nerds like us, which is why we make it more often than we make Neapolitan pizza. So without any further ado, let's make some pizza. What I'm going to make now is a normal pizza dough, but the only difference is that in this case, our hydration it will be higher than a normal Napolitan pizza. The duration is nothing more than uh, the relationship. The ratio. Quantity, the ratio. The ratio between the quantity of water that I'm going to use and the quantity of flour. In this case, I'm going to use an hydration of 75%, which means on one kilo of flour, I'm going to use 750 grams of water. I'm going to use fresh yeast, because fresh yeast is more common in Italy than dried yeast. But don't, uh, don't worry, you can easily do use dried yeast. The only difference is that here I'm going to use 3 grams. For the dry yeast, try to use 1 gram and a an half, maximum 2 grams. Now I add the yeast into the water. And the only thing that I'm going to do is dissolve the yeast. After the yeast is completely dissolved, we start to add the flour. Yesterday I sent Harper to go and buy some flour. So because he knew that we were going to make a pizza, he bought this because there is written pizzeria. Now, this is a very good flour and it's also easy to find in, in America or in other parts of the world. But if you don't find this one, don't worry, you can use a normal bread flour because it has the same protein content. Maybe try to open the bag also before. A little bit at the time. And you start to mix. Be sure that all the flour melt in the water. You don't want the crumble of flour. At this stage, which means before I use all the flour, I'm going to add some salt. And for some salt, I mean about 20 grams. And now the last part of our flour. This is a very sticky dough, so maybe you can have uh, some trouble at the beginning, but don't give up. You gotta stick with it. See, you can't add more flour, otherwise you are changing the ratio. Come to think of it, can you use a mixer for this? Like a stand mixer? Yes, maybe it's also better. <laughs> But because I don't have, I do by hands. The result will be good in the same way. After you incorporate all the flour, so you don't have a crumble 
of flour uh, anywhere. As you can see, it's, uh, it's sticky. You don't need to worry because this is the moment in which we let it rest for 20 minutes. We cover and wait. I know that it doesn't look good, but we need to trust the process. So what we are going to do now is pour a little bit of olive oil, spread the olive oil all around, and this helps as to work with the, this very hydra hy hydrated pizza dough because as you can see it doesn't stick and then we start to fold the pizza as you can see our pizza looks much better after i don't know two seconds, three seconds that we are working on. I will put another small quantity of olive oil just to help me to work on it. And what you need to do is just this. Take the dough from the middle and make the both sides just fold in because this helps the dough to incorporate the air and also give uh, strength to our dough. And after you do this about five or six times, it's time to cover it again and wait for another 20 minutes. So right now our pizza dough looks much, much better than before. What we do now, the same thing that we did, which means a little bit of olive oil. And like before, it's the same kind of movement. And as you can see, the dough is much more smoother. It starts also to have some uh, small bubble. You can stretch it. All these are very good sign that our dough is a good dough. It's probably that special pizza flour I got. Wait a moment. The quality of the flour is very important for the pizza, for the pasta, for the bread. So you need to find a very high quality flour. If you don't find the caputo, as we said, also a very good flour bread. Flour bread? Bread flour. Bread flour. It can work in the same way. So after we did this for other four, five, six times, is the moment in which we can close our pizza and we put it in the fridge for at least 12 hours. You can put in the fridge for 13, 14, 15, with this kind of flour, I wouldn't suggest 24, because maybe in that case you need a stronger flour. In the arms of the angel. Because Alper is always hungry. Hey. Yesterday evening, I made another batch of pizza dough that I let rest in the fridge for about 12 hours. And this is how the dough looks after the 12 hours. What we need to do is let it rest at room temperature for about one hour, one hour and a half. So the dough is not cold like it is now out of the fridge. And it will make it rise a little bit more. Look how wonderful is our dough. It's jiggly. So what we are going to do now is portion our dough because we are not going to cook it all in once. And to do this, uh, we need the semolina flour. I don't want to change the hydration of our dough. And usually this dough, a pizza dough, doesn't really absorb the semolina flour. So you spread some flour on your table, some flour also on your hand, and gentle because we need to keep as much air as possible. We let it 
just naturally fall on the table. Always with some flour on your hands, otherwise the dough still stick. And I'm going to divide this in three parts. I fold the dough like this. I'm doing the same motion that I did before. I pick up the dough from the middle and then fold it a little bit. And we put on side. So you're kind of tucking the rough sides underneath. But I will have to. Making this pizza as, uh, is an advantage because you don't need a special oven, you don't need a special uh, pizza stone, or you don't need any special tool. You need just a baking tray. We spread some olive oil in our baking tray. It's very important that also the size of your baking tray will have some olive oil because these avoid one that our pizza dough will stuck stuck stick stick, stick to the tray, baking tray. And on the other side, it will help us also to make it a little bit more crispier on the bottom. Now we take one piece of our dough and we place in the middle. Put some extra olive oil on the dough. Spread it. And now I cover the dough. And I spread some olive oil because in this way the plastic paper doesn't attach to my dough. Because then if it attaches, attach, when you take it out, you will destroy all the bubble of your pizza. And you don't want this. Let them rest for about one hour and a half. What about that one? I have a special plan. Don't worry. No stickage at all. Olive oil is the answer. Ask my mom. La base Eva è l'olio. E mi cambia niente, non capisco. Però quindi la cucina. Ho sconsiglio, ci può venire pure. So now we use some other olive oil. And we can spread our pizza dough. What I'm going to do is from the center to the edges, without using all the ends, but just this part. How do you call polpastrelli in English? Fingertips. Fingertips. <laughs> it's so soft. If it happens that your pizza dough, when you spread, like a little bit, it happens also mine. They, it comes back. 
The only thing that you need to do is just wait five minutes because the gluten needs to relax and then you keep pushing. Now we pour a little bit of Harper. Uh, I'm gonna guess olive oil. Bravo. And we let it uh, rest for about half an hour, one hour. It depends from the temperature in your home. What we are looking for here is that our pizza dough rise a little bit more. Right now it's flat like that, so we're looking for something like that. One good thing about making a pizza in a pan, or how we call in Italy pizza in teglia, is that Having a big baking tray, you can actually do several kinds of pizza with the same uh, pizza. Right now, I'm going to do two thirds with tomato sauce. The other one, I will put uh, some potatoes. As always, the sauce for a pizza is raw. This is just whole peeled tomatoes, olive oil, salt, and some oregano. Another important thing that you should keep in mind when you do this kind of pizza is that uh, you don't put all the ingredients like they do in Napoli with a normal Napolitan pizza because that one takes nine, like 90 seconds to cook. This will take longer. So what we are going to do is put at the beginning the raw ingredients that they need to be cooked. And then in a second moment, we, will, we are going to add all the rest. I'm going to cook this pan pizza at the highest temperature that my oven reaches. In this case, it's 280 degrees Celsius. Right now, our pizza is starting to be ready, but it's not completely cooked. cooked. As you can see, it starts to brown a little bit, but it needs uh, at least other five minutes more. And this is the moment in which we are going to put our ingredients for our toppings. The pizza with the potatoes uh, will have also some mozzarella. The middle part, uh, we are doing uh, what in Italy is known as uh, pizza alla romana which means anchovies, capers, and some mozzarella. The last one, I'm making what we call in Italy pizza capricciosa. Black olives, green olives, herchocks. These are a champignon mushroom that I sauteed before with just some olive oil and salt and black pepper. Some prosciutto cotto. And last but not least, our mozzarella. We put back it in the oven, just the time that the cheese melts. The very last thing for our pizza with potatoes is some very good pesto. And it's the last thing because, as you know, pesto shouldn't be cooked. I remember the very first time you made pizza in Telia for me. It was one of our earliest videos where I first gave you Domino's pizza. And you made this big square pan pizza. And I remember being like, wait a minute, I thought Italian pizza was supposed to be round and like this. This is the kind of pizza that usually we make at home because if we want a round Napolitan one in Italy, we are so lucky that we just need to go outside of the house and we will find anyway a good Napolitan pizza. So at Tom, we don't do it. We do this kind of pizza that actually is pretty good. It's really good and it doesn't need any special equipment. It's way easier to make for a group of people. You and I know how frustrating it is when you have a little 12 inch uni oven trying to make enough pizzas for everyone. Buon, Buon appetito. appetito. Oh, dang. What's great about it is like how light and fluffy the dough comes out. It's kind of surprising. Let's say that it can be just maybe between focaccia and pizza. 
Mm, yeah. Yeah, like if you look at how sort of thick and fluffy that dough is, you get a sense of the the focaccia qualities of it. It's so good that doesn't make you actually miss the Napolitan pizza. And you need to try to do it because it's too good. Absolutely. Hey, by the way, whatever happened to that pizza dough you put in the bowl? I'm so confused. Trust the process. It's like a double layered pizza crust. per pizza baciata and it's made to be stuffed I'm using stracchino usually made a pizza sandwich I made what is called in Italy pizza baciata. You should know that a lot of pizza in Rome, like pizza bianca, is stuffed. What they do in Rome, usually they cook what they call pizza la palla, the big piece of pizza, and then they cut right. and they stuffed. Right. Okay. But Bonci, that everyone knows, invented this version that it's much, much easier and much more convenient. Pizza bajada. Then you oven and it's ready to be stuffed. That's amazing. Look at that. That looks so good. Buon appetito. Buon appetito. Okay, I've added yet another reason to like pan pizza. This is why, even here in Italy, when sometimes they have a literal wood oven in their backyard, when we have a pizza party, we still make pan pizza. And it comes out good even if you are not a master chef of the pizza, if you're not a professional pizza maker. Yes, we don't have any words. We lost all of our words. Before we go, a quick shout out to two pasta grammarians who look like they're having a lot of fun making some fresh pasta at home. Bravi! If you try Eva's pizza recipe, tag us on Instagram or Facebook at Pasta Grammar. We'd love to see a picture of what you come up with. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you guys next time. Ciao. Ciao. Everyone, when they talk about Italian pizza, they're always like, what makes Italian pizza Italian is the that they use very few ingredients, maybe one or two. Uh, uh. Here, the, the thing is that not how many ingredients you use, but which ingredients you use, the quality, how you mix them together that makes Italian pizza the best in the world.